Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. We're here at the HDMI booth or the HDMI forum booth to talk about the new display protocol technologies that have been announced at CES 2025. We're going to start with HDMI 2.2 because there's been a lot of discussion about this and how it relates to graphics cards, displays. When are we getting HDMI coming in the next few years? So that's something that we're going to be talking about in today's video. So we'll start with the main bandwidth spec of HDMI 2.2, which we're now getting basically double the bandwidth in HDMI. Previously, we said HDMI 2.1, we saw 48 gigabits per second. That's being improved to 96 gigabits per second with the new HDMI 2.2 protocol, meaning that we're getting about 16 gigabits per second more than DisplayPort 2.1, which topped out at 80 gigabits per second. So this is gonna be a really significant change for next generation monitors that are high resolution and high refresh rate. DisplayPort 2.1 has been started to be adopted by companies, you know, graphics card manufacturers with NVIDIA recently, display manufacturers as well, to enable not using display stream compression for those high resolution, high refresh rate monitors. So HDMI 2.1 being that lower bandwidth at 48 gigabits per second meant that there would have been some monitors where you'd have to use DSC over HDMI 2.1 but you could use DP 2.1 and get away with not using DSC at 80 gigabits per second. Well now, in a couple of years time, you'll see HDMI 2.2, 96 gigabits per second, matching the capabilities and even exceeding the capabilities of DisplayPort 2.1. But there's a few things to note here because this is just a announcement of HDMI 2.2. It doesn't mean that you'll be able to go to a store in the next couple of months and buy a product that uses HDMI 2.2. NVIDIA's new graphics cards, the RTX 50 series, do not use HDMI 2.2. They're still HDMI 2.1 products, and you'll see the exact same thing from AMD's RX 9000 series. That's because the HDMI forum hasn't even released the specification to manufacturers yet. So companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, and any of the display brands are not gonna be able to integrate HDMI 2.2 until they've gotten the final spec. So that spec, uh, the HDMI forum says, is coming in the first half of 2025, and they say there will be the potential for some devices to start being released in 2026. But in 2026, we're more likely to be seeing things like cables and maybe some media playback related devices with HDMI 2.2. They'll be starting the development of switches, uh, you know, testing tools, that sort of thing. But when it comes to graphics cards, for example, the thing that matters for monitors and game consoles, that sort of thing, we're not going to be seeing HDMI 2.2 for several years. When HDMI 2.1 was released, uh, when it was first announced back in 2017, it took roughly three years or thereabouts for HDMI 2.2, or uh, 2.1, sorry, to come into NVIDIA's RTX 30 series, AMD's RX, uh, whatever it was, 6000 series at the time. So based on that, we would be expecting new graphics cards using HDMI 2.2 sometime in, I guess, the 2027 to 2028 timeframe. The reason for that, of course, is they have to integrate this into the silicon and they have to start developing the silicon and they can't start doing that until they've got the spec. The spec isn't released. That gives us the basic timeline. It could even be four years with the, the length of time that it's taking for chips to be manufactured these days. But the basics to know are that monitors are not gonna use two, HDMI 2.2 now. Graphics cards, not gonna be expected for one to two generations. However, it's good to see that it's coming. Now, there's also a new cable standard that's been announced with this as well, which is gonna provide that double bandwidth 96 gigabits per second. They're calling this the Ultra 96 cable, which would be sort of a competitor to DisplayPort's DP80 cable. Um, again, we're gonna to have to wait a little bit for those cables to come and you'll be able to learn more about them in the future. We talked a little bit to HDMI here about the cable lengths and those sorts of things. It is, of course, up to the cable manufacturers as to how long the cables are. So whether or not they'll be able to make a one meter or two meter passive cable is really what the, you know, the cable manufacturers can do to meet the specification. If they're not meeting the specification to be certified, then that sort of length passive cable is not going to be possible. However, most manufacturers should be able to make long active cables. So 50, 100 meters should be possible with some sort of active or fiber optic solution. But for passive cables, the feeling here was that it's gonna be very similar to DP80 cables from DisplayPort, initially probably around one to two meters long, and then hopefully with more advanced technology, maybe three meters in the future. But again, we're talking about most of the longer lengths requiring some sort of active connection, at least for the top tier spec. So, HDMI will remain backwards compatible, so devices that use a 2.2 port, cables that use the 2.2 or Ultra 96 spec will be backwards compatible with the previous versions, so 
no change to the physical connector, you'll be able to use those backwards compatibly. But for example, you're not gonna be able to use one of the slower spec cables with the new 96 gigabits per second standard. You will need an Ultra 96 cable to access that bandwidth. This is all very similar to what we've learned from the HDMI 2.0 to 2.1 generation. You're gonna need a high speed cable. It's backwards compatible. The connectors are all the same. It, it opens up the use of new technologies and that sort of thing. They're also talking about a new protocol called Latency Indication Protocol or LIP. This is designed to help the lip sync between video and audio. That's probably not gonna be super relevant for monitors. That's, I feel like, more of a TV and uh, AV receiver type of specification. With monitors, usually the display is low latency enough, audio solutions are low latency. So you don't really have to worry about that sort of thing, but when you're talking about AV receivers and TVs, latency can be a problem. So that seems to be something that's designed for that. So, yeah, like I said, we should be seeing this technology, at least for us, the things we cover, gaming monitors, I would say in two to three years, but it's on the horizon now. So yeah, pretty interesting thing to see here at HDMI. The Harbour Unboxed CES coverage is brought to you by Gigabyte and their new range of X870 and Z890 motherboards, powering the latest AMD and Intel processors. Gigabyte Z890 range supports Intel's new Core Ultra processors, while the X870 range supports AMD's Ryzen 9000 series, including the gaming flagship Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. All models offer robust power delivery with optimal cooling, screwless M.2 storage, and AI-powered overclocking software to ensure you get the most out of your CPU. The stacked I.O. offers various connectivity options, including Wi-Fi 7, up to 10 gigabit LAN, Thunderbolt 4, and plenty of USB ports. Now, a new feature of the AI top models is the included utility that allows you to train your own AI models at home or for small slash large scale businesses. Gigabyte's X870 and Z890 motherboards are available right now from your favorite online retailers. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. Also announced at CES 2025 is a new DisplayPort specification, DisplayPort 2.1b. We are here at the HDMI booth still, but you know, we'll talk about DisplayPort anyway. So this is not as much of a major update as HDMI 2.2. DisplayPort 2.1b is all about introducing a new cable specification for active cables. So previously with DP 2.1a, the previous specification, there was no real implementation of active cabling. Cable manufacturers could have made active cables if they wanted to, but most manufacturers were working on passive cables, which were quite limited in length if you saw some of our previous coverage of those cables. I believe at the moment the maximum length on offer is 1.5 meters. At the time we made that video, I think it was 1.2 meters. And with many of the monitors that were released using DisplayPort 2.1, they would only package in a 0.8 or 1.0 meter long cable. That's obviously a problem because a lot of people need a 2 meter or 1.8 meter long cable to go from their PC sitting below their desk to the display. So the whole specification is kind of a bit pointless if the cable length is useless for people. So the DisplayPort 2.1b specification looks to address this. The main change is the introduction of a new cable certification called DP80LL or DisplayPort 80 Low Loss. And basically what this means is active cables are now supported and introduced into the specification. VESA are claiming that the initial lengths of these cables will be three meters long or three times the general length of DP80 passive cables. So when you buy a DP80 LL cable, active cable, up to three meters long, because they're active cables, they will be more expensive because of the active signaling that has to go into that type of cabling system. So unfortunately, if you do want those three meter DP80 cables, they're probably not gonna be included in the box of monitors. You're gonna to have to go out and spend money on them and that sort of thing. But that's no different to active HDMI cables, for example. If you wanted a 10 meter HDMI 2.1 cable, you would have had to buy an active cable. So no different there, just for shorter lengths because of the higher bandwidth requirements. So that's really all there is to the DisplayPort 2.1B specification. There's no increase in bandwidth. It's gonna be available pretty much right now. It is, is in fact integrated into NVIDIA's GeForce 50 series products. So these are the first consumer GPUs to use the DisplayPort 2.1 spec. They're integrating DisplayPort 2.1B and it will support those active cables. So yeah, like I said, not as big of an update as HDMI 2.2, but uh, an update that is needed for DisplayPort. We need to see suitable cable lengths. 
and they're making steps to do that. So we should be seeing those sort of active cables very soon. This is all meant to be coming out very shortly. So yeah, that's just an update to the cabling, the signal standard sort of things, the HDMI display port right here at CES 2025. I thought a dedicated video was worth it because there's gonna be a lot of people asking questions about HDMI 2.2 and DisplayPort 2.1b. Hopefully you've gotten all the information that you need to know in this video. So yeah, thanks to Gigabyte for bringing us out to uh, CES 2025. If you want to support Monitors Unbox and the work that we do here, you get our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you can access some cool benefits like our Discord community, monthly live streams, BTS chat, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.